Well, the question, do we need to double the water consumption, is actually misleading. Uh, what we've shown in the United States is that we've delinked population growth in the per capita use of water. As countries get richer, like the U.S., the per capita consumption goes down. So the real question for the poor parts of the world is, can they develop to such a degree where they can implement new technologies that reduce the per capita consumption? So that's point one. Point two is that most of the uses of the water are for irrigation, 70 to 80 percent in some cases. So some transfer to population centers will need to be done. 10 percent transfer uh, from irrigation to municipal or domestic uses would more than deal with the problem that's being suggested. So when you look at this, it's not just a question of people and numbers and water and consumption. The patterns of consumption have to be looked at. The individual patterns change as well as the overall societal patterns. So we don't need double the amount. So the numbers are deceiving. It's good to think a little bit about how much water is available per capita as some kind of a reference point. Some people say a thousand cubic meters, but it's it's useful as a reference point. But it is in you know, in of itself, it doesn't tell you the whole story. But one of the dramatic stories, I, to answer your question, is that since about 1996, the per capita consumption in the United States has been going down. That essentially delinks the notion of population increase uh, to water increase. When uh, people ask this question of what leaders need to do in order to assure that people have water, some parts of the world, uh, the rights to water are really arbitrary. It depends who's in charge, and they either give it to their friends or there's no system of rights. So the countries and territories must have some system of water rights to do any kind of reform and to assure that people get water. There is a debate about is there a human right to water because if you say there's a human right, perhaps that will force leaders to do it. I don't know. But a systems of rights where you have stable expectations over time, where people can invest, where money can commit, that's the first point. The second point, and this is more difficult in many ways, there needs to be political will inside countries. Even if you dreamed up the maximum amount of aid you think would be necessary to deal with the water problems as people talk about them today, and you got all that money, imagine that, you got all that money, it's a drop in the bucket compared to what has to be done. Even poor countries need to adjust water to higher priorities in their own domestic budgets in order to deal with the problem. And this means how can we help create incentives so that that happens? Because if they don't invest in the water, as it relates to development and other issues, they're just going to stagnate.